I'm Amy the Bunny Lady, and this is my partner Elusive, Ellie for short. Give me a high five. And today I'm going to give you some of my little tips, my favorite little tips that I use for caring for rabbits. If you are new to our channel, welcome. We give tips and tricks for how to make sure you have a happy and healthy bunny in your home. So if that's the kind of thing that you're interested in, go ahead and hit that subscription button and the notification bell so that you never miss any of our weekly videos. So my first little tip for you is to make it a habit, <laughs> make it part of your daily routine to give your rabbit a treat every day. Um, you want to make it at the same time every day and make it a really special treat that your rabbit will absolutely love. What this will do, and the reason I tell you to do this, is because giving a rabbit a daily treat is an easy way to figure out if they are feeling sick or not well before their illness is further along. Because rabbits have this tendency to hide their illnesses, hide their sicknesses. In the wild, this served the purpose of keeping them from standing out so that predators wouldn't end up trying to pick them off. But as pets, that means it can be difficult for us to tell that they're sick until they are very sick. But one of the common symptoms that you'll find among almost all rabbit illnesses is that they will have a decreased appetite, even for foods that they really love. So if one day you have your daily routine, you're giving your rabbit their special treat, and then they don't come running to you for it, then you know right away that there's something wrong and you need to make an appointment with your vet. Another little tip I have for you is a way to make your rabbit's feeding time a little bit more interesting. <laughs> what you can do is use old cardboard egg cartons, not the plastic ones or the styrofoam ones, but just the cardboard ones. Then you can actually give your rabbit their daily leafy greens or hide some treats in the little holes and then close it and give it to your rabbit so that they can kind of figure out how to chew through it or open it up while they are going for their daily leafy greens. This is great for a rabbit's mental enrichment. It gives them something to do. It uses their natural foraging instincts <laughs> while they get to have fun looking for those treats. This was actually a little tip that I learned from volunteering at the animal shelters <laughs> with rescue rabbits. Since the staff is always looking for cheap ways to keep rabbits occupied, they still want to try and help with the mental enrichment so they started collecting old cardboard egg cartons and it was just a great form of mental enrichment <laughs> to keep rabbits from getting bored. A rabbit proofing tip that I have for you that has actually worked surprisingly well for me with Ellie is using masking tape. So you know that edge of the baseboard that your rabbit tends to chew on, that top edge? You can get a thick roll of masking tape. Probably you'll want it at least one or two inches in width. Put that all along the edge of the baseboard to prevent your rabbit from chewing on that area. The reason this works is because it completely changes the texture of the wood and the, the surface underneath so that your rabbit just plain isn't interested in it anymore. I read a little thing on a forum about this once and it was just, I was like, really? I don't know, that seems too easy. But it actually worked really well. Uh, she, when I put the masking tape on, she doesn't chew those areas anymore. It is something you could try if you're having a lot of trouble rabbit proofing your baseboards. Um, I will say though, if it doesn't work, so if your rabbit continues to chew on those areas despite the tape being there, you want to remove the tape because you don't want your rabbit eating the tape. <laughs> The next little tip I have for you is growing your own grass for your rabbit. Now you can do this regardless of whether or not you have a lawn outside. <laughs> you can grow like little little kits of grass that can be great for, you know, letting your rabbit forage a little bit in the grass. Grass is actually very good for rabbit teeth and rabbit digestion. It is one of those traits that is actually very healthy for your rabbit and something to try out. Um, growing, growing your own grass can also cut down on the leafy greens that you need to buy every week at the grocery store, 
or farmer's market because of course the grass also counts as leafy greens for your rabbit <laughs> so i did this by buying a wheat grass growing kit it was one of those things that was perfectly pet safe doesn't have any added fertilizers or pesticides or chemicals that might not make it good for <laughs> pet consumption i'll leave a link to the one that i got in the description below <laughs> if you are interested in trying to grow your own grass for your rabbit to help with their mental enrichment and give them new flavors to try out In making sure that all the chemicals surrounding your rabbit are actually safe for them, you can also make a rabbit safe, pet safe, <laughs> all purpose cleaner using really simple and cheap items that you could probably find around your house and at the very least <laughs> in the grocery store. Really all you need is white vinegar and tap water and then a, a spray bottle to mix them up in. <laughs> so you mix equal parts vinegar and water. So one cup of vinegar, one cup of water mix them together, shake them up in a spray bottle, and then it's a very effective all-purpose cleaner. That quick. <laughs> the problem I tend to have with this uh, vinegar and water all-purpose cleaner is that it smells really bad. I mean, it, it smells like vinegar, which to me is not a very pleasant smell. So what you can do is add a couple drops of an, an essential oil that is a pleasant scent for you so that you can get the mixture, <laughs> the vinegar mixture, smelling a little bit less like vinegar and you still have a rabbit safe solution. Scents that are safe to use around rabbit are mint scents. Um, so anything like mint, spearmint, those kinds of things. Um, also citrus scents, which would be like lemon, orange, grapefruit, those kinds of things are also safe. Um, and also uh, some floral scents, so lavender is okay to use around rabbits also. The next tip I have for you is a tip for expanding your rabbit's living space, so making their enclosure a little bit bigger very easily. If you have a rabbit cage that's a little bit too small, which, <laughs> spoiler alert, it's most rabbit cages, I have a, a video you can check out about uh, rabbit enclosures and how to make sure it's big enough, but in most cases, rabbit cages are a little bit too small, but what you can do to very easily increase the space without having to buy a whole new gigantic rabbit cage is probably very expensive, is get a rabbit playpen or a pet playpen. They're usually actually marketed towards dogs. But these pet playpens, you can use twisty ties or some kind of zip ties to attach them to the sides of your rabbit's cage. And then, voila, always keep the rabbit cage door open and all of a sudden they have a lot more space. This is also good for rabbits who seem to be kind of attached to their original cage. So you're afraid taking away that cage would end up making your rabbit feel a little bit more exposed and unsafe. So in those cases, you can simply expand their space by adding a rabbit playpen. You can also do this if you already have a rabbit playpen. You can just add another one on to make their space even bigger. So it's a very useful, <laughs> a very useful type of enclosure that you can have for your rabbit because it's very versatile in the ways you can use it. You can also fit it into a lot of different sizes of space. So if you only have like this really awkward shaped space, you can shape the enclosure however you want to. Another useful tool that I've used for rabbit proofing is these little command hooks. Command hooks can be attached to walls uh, with, a little, with a little sticky side on the back and they are made to be able to come off of walls without taking any paint off and without putting any nails into the wall at all. So they're useful, especially in apartments where you're not allowed to put anything into the walls. I use these command hooks in two ways. Uh, one is for keeping wires from dangling down towards the floor. So what I will do is put these command hooks on the wall so that when I have a cord next to a plug, I can then place it on top of these command hooks so that they are out of my rabbit's reach and she can't like go up and get them. So this keeps them from dangling on the floor so my rabbit will be less likely to go after them. <laughs> the other way that I use them is for connecting gates to wall or furniture to keep my rabbit out of areas. I use DIY storage cube gates and just line them up with zip ties. And then I'll use the command hooks to attach these gates to the sides of the bed or the sides of the wall or 
you know, whatever pieces of furniture you have, they'll stick on most surfaces. And that way, Ellie is not able to move the gates aside whenever she wants to. That is something you can do to help keep your rabbit out of areas and keep them from getting underneath areas you don't want them to get to, you know, things like that. Another tip that I have for keeping your rabbit as healthy as possible is giving your rabbit a couple different types of hay every day. While Timothy hay is most definitely the best and healthiest type of hay to give your rabbit because it has such a high fiber content, two or three kinds a day is actually very, very healthy for a rabbit. It gives them a better mixture of nutrients and vitamins that you'll find in different types of hay. You still want to make sure you're giving your rabbit grass-based hays, so hays like orchard hay, oat hay, meadow hay, ryegrass hay. Those, those types of hays are actually quite good for rabbits and put a handful or two of the, that in with your Timothy hay every day. It's good for the you know mental enrichment and foraging abilities of a rabbit to have those different flavors to look after. But it's also very good for their health and making sure that they have a diverse amount of nutrients in their daily diet. The one type of hay that you generally want to avoid is alfalfa hay. Uh, this is actually not a grass-based hay, it's a legume and it's good for young rabbits because it can help them gain weight and gain healthy weight and fast and if you have an underweight adult rabbit your veterinarian might recommend giving them alfalfa hay however for most adult rabbits it's not great because it will cause them to uh, gain weight and become <laughs> become overweight rabbits and that's not really what we want because that's not good for bunnies Sometimes it can be difficult to find these other types of hay in pet stores. Sometimes you can find them, but if you're having trouble finding any other types of hay, uh, check out Small Pet Select. I'll have, a, I'll have a link to them down in the description below. I use them for all of my normal hay. <laughs> They're excellent. And they have orchard hay and oat hay that you can check out if that's something you want. They even have like a sampler box so you can make sure your rabbit likes it before getting a whole big box of it. So check them out if you are looking for other types of hay. If, like Ellie, your rabbit hates to be brushed, then a little tip I have for you is to use a lint roller. <laughs> Ellie will not sit still for me to brush her. She acts like I am trying to torture her or something whenever a brush even comes near her. So what I'll do is take a lint roller and just occasionally uh, gloss over the surface of her coat to get rid of a bunch of those loose spurs. While this won't get any of that undercoat, like it's not the most effective brushing method, it will get a lot of those surface hairs that your rabbit would be ingesting. So using a lint roller along with like a butt plucking technique, which I will like pet her and then pluck a little bit of the, that fur, that loose fur, you know what I'm talking about, those loose tufts of fur that usually are around the butt area. And then just occasionally go a few swipes of the lint roller and that helps groom them, at least basically, well enough if they will absolutely not sit still for a brush or a comb. And another tip I have for you is keeping a bottle of baby gas drops around. Now this is useful for if your rabbit has a buildup of gas. It does the same thing for babies as it does for rabbits. <laughs> Who knew? So if you notice that your rabbit is sitting uncomfortably, like they're pressing, pressing their belly into the ground, as if like they're trying to move, move the gas around inside their body, I suppose, they might have a decreased appetite at this point. What you can do is use uh, cymethicone, which is baby gas drops. You can get this at a grocery store, that's where I will usually get it, but I'll also leave a link in the description so you can find it more easily. What you'll do is give your rabbit one cc of this, so one milliliter, every hour for three hours, so it'll be three milliliters total. You can't really overdose on it, it's not actually dangerous for rabbits at all, but it can help them, it can help their digestion smooth out and help things pass through a little bit. It's just usually recommended that you do one cc at a time. But essentially, after using this, your rabbit should be able to pass gas and then you'll start to notice their behavior going back to normal. They'll start eating and they'll start pooping after a few hours. If after four or five hours they haven't started acting mostly normal again, then you wanna make sure you keep a very close eye on your rabbit. Uh, make sure that they're eating and pooping at least a little bit. If they are not, if your rabbit has completely stopped, 
eating and pooping for more than 10 hours, and then that's an emergency situation, and you need to get your rabbit to a vet. This is just one of those things where gas is usually a minor medical condition that you wouldn't really have to go to the vet for, but it can be easily confused with gastrointestinal stasis, which is a very dangerous emergency situation. So giving a rabbit these gas drops can help them <laughs> let loose, <laughs> let loose that trapped gas and get back to normal without having to make an expensive trip to the vet. And then you'll know that, you know, this is just a, this was just a minor situation and it's nothing to worry about. If you found the tips in this video helpful, then feel free to hit that subscription button and the thumbs up so that you too can know. <laughs> um, and thank you so much for watching. I do hope that I'll see you next week.